ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Beck Smallwood and Chris Bailey Preston, the <laughs> Mountain Girls. <laughs> Boom. Honey, honey. What is up? I like that. The Mountain Girls. The. There are yes, a lot of Mountain the, Girls. A lot. Especially this year because it seems like y'all have kind of upped the ante from what you were telling me here before you hopped on air. There's going to be quite a few Mountain Gals. Mm-hmm. The Mountain Girl experience has grown in, in just a year since we started. Only 365 yeah. days. Yeah. Even less than Short that. days. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what is going to be different this year versus last year? So, you know, last year the Mountain Girl experience was kind of this small dream with just a few of us working on it. And, um, you know, we proved it to be successful. And so, uh, you know, thankfully uh, the city is really on board with us this year. We are um, expanding to a, a two-day event um, so we're going to have live music both days and then a lot of other things going on. But we're going to be blocking off some streets. We're going to have three stages. So um, we we are getting big time. Nice. What would Alex call it downstairs? Uh, mountain Girl Days? <laughs> yeah, like Hillbilly Days, only Mountain Girl Days. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, Beg, like, what did you think of, like, what was your experience of the Mountain Girl experience Oh, my gosh, last I think it's year? the best thing to ever happen to women in Appalachia. Like, what, what was one of the things, like, you kind of got out of it? Because everybody that I talked to, they all kind of got their own little thing out yeah. of it, you know? So, for me, the coolest part of the whole thing was, it's probably not what you expect, but they were doing, like, a dulcimer workshop. Um, with Sarah Kate mm-hmm. and Sarah Kate Morgan, uh, all the kids were there, and then I looked over at my daughter, she's seven, and she's like, Can I do that? and I'm like, Yeah, you can. And so she goes and gets the dulcimer, and she's sitting down and she's playing it. And I had tears in my eyes because I thought, Here's my kid doing something like this in Pikeville, something that we've never been able to do before. So you would have thought for me it would have been, oh, the stage with all the performers and the artists. And that was awesome. But yeah. seeing my daughter have an experience with music in my hometown, like I look at that picture and Chris had sent me a picture of her like that. And I told Chris, I'm like, I just looked at that and cried because I would have never thought we could have had something like that there. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. I think... You know, we we can talk a lot about our lineup and all the musicians and and artists that we're going to have. But the workshops that we do, um, those were my favorite part last year. And things like like uh, what Beck's talking about, you know, Beck was able to be there experiencing this with her kids. So this was a very family friendly event. And the workshops that I thought would be just for kids like we had songwriting and (laughs) And Abby, the spoon lady, and all these things I just envisioned the kids doing. You know, there were all the adults standing in line mm-hmm. to get their spoons and to get their dulcimers. And so adults and kids were were doing these things together, you know, like on an, on an even playing yeah. field. Yeah. And it was kind of <laughs> like everybody became a kid for a little while, mm-hmm. I felt like. That's cool. Yeah, and it was just the opportunity because most of those kids, I mean, you did have some of like, people like us, the artsy people, where their kids are exposed to that. But they've never had the opportunity to be exposed yeah. to anything like that before. So just seeing that, and even the adults, too. Like, Jen did her songwriting workshop, and um, it was an experience for everybody. And even the adults wrote cute little songs. But I thought, where else are they going to experience that? It, it's not just the... Yeah you know, performance, but I wasn't even sure about the workshops. I'm like, yeah, I'll come early, you know, just support whatever. I was like, this is freaking awesome. You know, it was just, it was so good. I mean, yeah, you can stay at home and, you know, play board games and bond that way, but this is a bonding experience that they may never get besides at the Mountain Girl experience. Where else are you going to sit in the parking lot in downtown Pikeville and learn how to play dulcimer? (laughs) It's just not (laughs) going to happen, happen. right? I mean, and look over and see like a 70-year-old woman with one in her lap and a 7-year-old girl and all the moms around crying. (laughs) Just Where else is that going to happen? So um, it created something really nice. So what are, what's going to be going on this year as far as activities? So speaking of those workshops, um, we will have the, the dulcimer workshop was really popular. Yeah. So Sarah Kate Morgan from Hindman Settlement School is coming back to do that again. 
Um, we're going to have a um, kind of a rhythm workshop that Melanie Turner, our banjo player with Coltown Dixie, is doing with like a lot of different rhythm instruments. Um, we have a poetry workshop uh, this year with Grace Ann Rogers. We have dance. So Carla Gover um, is coming in to teach Appalachian buck dancing, and she is like, you know, really well known uh, for years and years all over Kentucky um, for for her craft with that. And um, I think we're we're having a writing workshop. Um, so th- those are at least just some of those that I can think of. Um, and then music wise, you know. Um, like I said, we're going to have three stages of music, and we can talk about that. Then we'll have artists. So we had an art gallery last year, and we'll continue that. And so I know that for some of those artists, you know, they hadn't had a chance or really a place to display their artwork before. And some of the artists that are coming back this year have been, you know, really inspired, and now they've been working on art all year <laughs> yeah. to bring back. So it's inspired them to do more, and, and um, the art gallery was really you know, great opportunity for everybody to just walk by and talk to the artists and, and see what we do. And we had, you know, artists of all ages. Um, uh, we're also going to do on Friday this year, earlier in the day, some sort of professional development type workshops, like um, maybe more for um, women who are working, you know, in downtown, things that they can come to. Um, we are, you know, this is a charitable event and we raised funds, you know, last year we were raising funds for the um, the uh, West Care Emergency Shelter here yeah. f- for women and children. And then we're also working with Turning Point Domestic Violence Services in Prestonsburg. And so um, we're looking at ways that we can do some workshops for those folks as well, like some healing, mm-hmm. um, like music therapy type things. Mm. Um, so, yeah, actually I have... Um, <clears throat> um, uh, Someone who uh, the name is just escaped me just just for a second. Um, Cecilia, right? C- Cecilia Wright, Sonora May's cellist. So she came and played cello with Sonora last year, and she plays on Tyler um, Childers played on his Grammy nominated album. So she's mm-hmm. coming with her band to do a show, and then she's also she is a music therapist um, by trade, and so she's gonna do a workshop Ooh, i'd love to talk to her about that that seems mm-hmm. so interesting i mean music really is therapy and what y'all are doing with this mountain grill experience i mean that's therapy that's something that is so needed in this area i mean it, it really is a beautiful thing that y'all are doing for a, a great cause and also what i like about the mountain grill experience is yes it's for the ladies you know but like what I said, when I whenever I seen the pictures, you seen dads there with their little girls. Yeah. You know, it, like it was still everybody was welcome at this. Everybody was having a good time. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. So th- this is not a women's only <laughs> event right. by any means. Um, everyone is welcome, and we did have as many men there as we did women last year, which made me very very happy. Um, so yeah, dads who support their kids or, you know, men who support their wives or, you know, bring their mother who they love, whatever, everyone is welcome. It's just that this, this is an experience that is set to celebrate the creativity, the artistry, the grit of Appalachian women that we just kind of personally feel might not get uh, their due And Mm -hmm. we just, you know, originally this whole thing just started because I was looking for more experiences for my all-female band, Cold Town Dixie, to play. I just wanted some more opportunities to play. And then from that, we've developed more opportunities for a lot more women to play and for female artists to be exposed. And we, we just want everybody to you know, come and enjoy and celebrate that. And we have men on the stage, too. I mean, yeah. Beck, lead, Beck is the yeah. leader of a band, but with all male, you know, band members. Yeah. And so, you know, that's a really cool thing to be to be a female band leader. We have several of those, Zoe Howard and, and Yellow Line. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not that we won't have men on the stage. Um, and No, they'll know. be there. Yeah, and you know, you know, I was going to say back there. This no. this is an event for you know we have all genres of music. This is for all genders. This is for all people from anywhere and everywhere. And you know, I say to mm-hmm. men, if you love women, <laughs> if you yeah. love your wife, your daughter, you, you know, love your, your male child, girl, then then come yeah. and support. 
support that. I mean, one of the coolest things that that I have from last year back to that workshop is Tim showing Audie how to play that because Lord knows I cannot do it. But for them, it was a really cool moment of them sharing that. So definitely we welcome everyone. Yeah. So, like, was there anything different from that show, like you playing at that show with that audience? Was there anything different than just a normal concert for you, do you think? Oh, was the question. energy different or anything? Yeah, I mean, I think we were all, we share a common thought um, or a common feeling. Um, it's It's hard to be a woman in music. It just is. I think everybody would probably agree with that. Yeah. Um, and to be in a room full of people who know that and feel that and understand that, and then to be in a room full of people who support that, yeah, it's like, okay, these are my people. You know, yeah. it, it just it feels nice to be supported like that. Yeah, I think we can be judged a little bit more. I, mm-hmm. I know in playing bluegrass, which is a very male dominated genre Mm -hmm. you know i feel like we're scrutinized a little bit more sometimes but we were you know at at mountain girl you know we all knew knew we've all felt that so Mm -hmm. like beck said you know we really supported each other and some of my favorite moments are i can think of three different musicians and we we try to have um, musicians and artists of all caliber from you know uh, very popular to you know, I only played in a room once before, you know, we try to, you know, give some opportunity for, for younger artists as well. But, um, I saw a couple of people who'd never really performed that much to one who had performed quite a bit, make a mistake, you know, Mm -hmm. mess up a song, forget the lyrics and have to stop and start over. And in a lot of shows like that, the audience would cringe, maybe boo. Mm -hmm. People cheered even louder Mm -hmm. for every time that I saw a mess up. Yeah, people were just like, you know, that's okay. (laughs) It was the most supportive environment. It Mm -hmm. was, and the words. (laughs) I mean, like me and Sonora were talking after the show, and she was complimenting me, and I was complimenting her, and it was like. I got in the car and I'm like, man, Snore May was talking real nice to me. And Tim was like, of course she was. But it's that we're just not almost conditioned to that all the time. So it was yeah. so nice to have, just like Chris said, like you could mess up and everybody be like, that's all right. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, so it was just a different experience. Yeah, I think people, I think sometimes women get the bad, a bad rap that we're, we're catty or, you know, mm-hmm. we're in competition with each other. And, um, you know, it's so not the case and shouldn't be the case. And I think that this proves it. And like this event, you know, for me on a personal level has been so great because I have found so many new friendships and connections. Yeah. Like Beck and I have both been musicians who've been living here in this area, but we never worked together mm-hmm. or really knew each other. We've played the same festivals before and yeah. didn't really ever talk. And now, you know, like we're partnered up basically. And, yeah. and you know, I know of two people who got jobs after Mountain Girl because of connections that mm-hmm. they made. Wow. So it's awesome. <laughs> Y'all are changing people's lives with this. You're changing the area as a whole with this because just imagine you know those little girls that you're influencing that Mm -hmm. comes to those shows that you know i mean the music industry in itself is typically a male dominated area but i mean whenever they see something like this they see like wow i can do that yeah i can do that things are Mm -hmm. changing and and y'all are really changing stuff with this because i know that you know some people are still stuck in that 1950s mindset around here and there needs to be more women on a lot more of these stages Mm -hmm. here around the area and you're not with this you're not looking for that you're doing your own thing and that's what these girls are seeing is not just that hey like i can do this but like women can be powerful they yeah. can make their own <clears throat> rules. They can make their own festivals. Mm-hmm. You're not. You're not. You're not. You're, you're not waiting for anybody else. You're going to do this mm-hmm. on your own terms, and that is just so empowering. And Thank it's a you. great thing that y'all are doing. Appreciate that. So, so with the, this Mountain Girl experience, you said it's going to be two days. What are the mm-hmm. days going to be this year? It's so July 22nd and July 23rd. So that's the same weekend. Um, that we had last year, and I see on I see on your website too. Are you still looking for uh, people to get involved as far as like artists and vendors, food trucks, all that? Yes, we are. Yeah, so we we would uh, be happy to hear from those who might be interested. Um, 
we I guess we haven't put an official call out there yet, but we can we can put that out there now. You know, artisan vendors. Um, we didn't have a vendor booths last year, but we will have that this year. So you can contact us about that um, or food trucks as well. Um, so that would be our email is um, uh, mountain girl experience at gmail.com, I think, or our website is www.mountaingirl.com. <laughs> All the W's, whatever. Um, yeah, or contact, you know, Beck Smallwood or Chris Bailey Preston. Yeah. Um, of course, Robin Irwin at the app. You know, we couldn't do any of this without the Appalachian Center for the Arts. They're mm-hmm. great people. And, um, you know, they honestly, you know, I had a little dream and, and Robin helped make it happen. And her wonderful staff, yeah, um, Shannon, amazing. everybody at the app and, you know, the, the arena staff have really been on board with us this year. We'll be using the mountaintop uh, media stage there at the arena. Um, so, yeah, we're excited. Yeah. That's awesome. Good stuff. Who, who yeah. all is going to be on the lineup? I'm I'm sure you are, Beck. I yes. know Cole Town Dixie <laughs> is. So, who That's else is going to be part. involved? <laughs> we booked ourselves yes. first. It was really hard to get. <laughs> but who all is yeah. going to, like, who all are we going to be hearing this year? So I see that you have a Zoe Howard t-shirt on. Exactly. Got yeah. To so. Represent. Yeah. Yes. She's so awesome. We love Zoe. Yeah. And she'll be bringing her full band with her this year. Um, we have uh, a, a songwriter. Uh, yeah, so we round. have a songwriters round, which I'm super excited about because that's cool. Um, you know, part of this that, that's been fun for you know me and Chris is the the one thing is we get to help our friends, right? So, yeah. you know, we have all these female musicians that we've grown close to and are friends with, and I'm like, oh my gosh, we have a stage to put you on, you know? Yeah. So, some of my really good friends, um, Jen Tackett. Uh, Chelsea Nolan, uh, Anna Klein, and Tiffany Williams, they will do a songwriter's round on Saturday. So we're really excited about that, too. Very cool. Be very yeah. amazing. I love songwriter's rounds because, uh, I, you know, you hear the music and uh, especially like, like one of your songs, like Wasteland, you know, mm-hmm. how that speaks so much truth. But you really want to hear the full story behind that. Yeah. And I feel like songwriter rounds gives the artist a chance to really explain that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me being a, just a music lover, I love listening to the music, but I always love hearing the stories behind oh, it. Oh, yeah. So it's great that y'all females are going to be able to tell the stories behind those songs with that. Yeah. I love a songwriter's round. Yeah. I'm yeah, so glad y'all are doing that. Because I feel like it's all like powerhouse women are out there too, you know, like oh yeah. That that's a, that's some, a great lineup. Yeah, absolutely. Some great names. And then like you said, helping our friends out. So Julie Golf, um a local musician Julie here. Is, yeah. Um, yeah. She's yeah. so good. So Julie yeah. Golf uh, in the swag tones. Oh, yeah. yeah. They'll oh, she, be there. She is a yeah. beast. I, yeah. I, we love Julie. I'm so like when I, I used to play drums a little bit and I seen her I'm like how can you be that good? Oh, <laughs> yeah. She is awesome. Big shout out to Julie. Yeah, yeah. Julie's her. awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. We've got um, Sydney Adams, uh, Courtney Mason. Um, we're going to do some smaller uh, songwriter workshops uh, in the on the pavilion stage. Um, with some up and comers, um, Emma Gilly. Um, we have Carla Gover is going to perform as well. I'm trying to check my my list here so I don't leave anybody out. Um, our uh, in the evening, our headliner shows on Saturday night will be Luna and the Mountain Jets. <sighs> Love Luna. Yeah. yeah. Isn't um, it nice to be able to say all these names and be like, these are all great people? Yes. Like, it's not just like you got the best musicians, you got the best people. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, you know, Teresa Prince is awesome and she wanted to be a part of it last year. And so, you know, we're able to make it happen this year. And then um, she's the queen. Yeah. She she's is. the queen. She really is. I mean, like, you got to <laughs> yeah. give her that title. She, she really and she's is. She's a mountain girl. Yeah. You know, Lawrence she's County awesome. mountain girl. So she's done so much for this so area. So it's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, I'm a big uh, fan of Brother Smith um, that uh, tours in, in Kentucky and, and other places as well. But they have this awesome um, backup singer, uh, Amber Lee Winfrey uh, Cadell, and she's going to move front and center and be leading leading the show. Very and cool. they're going to be her backup band for the night. And uh, nice. that's an amazing, fun band. Like, I'm planning to dance a lot. Yeah, it'll be fun, for sure. It'll <laughs> to be that fun. one. Um, we also have um, the Kentucky Poet Laureate coming. 
um, which is uh, a really big deal. And that's going to be on Friday evening as well. Um, and so I'm just trying to find my schedule here so I can get everything right. That that's Chris Friday is night. the organized one. Of I the have two of like us. my, my uh, there, spreadsheet so, here. And there's so much going on. Like it would be hard for me to yeah. wrap my mind around so, it. While Chris is, is looking for that, just a little bit about the layout. I'll, I'll just talk about um, where the artists will be. So we'll be using the mountaintop media stage, which is awesome. It already has, you know, it'll have the seating and all of that. Yeah. And then we'll move into the app. Um, to the theater downtown for later in the sh- in the evening. So uh, have a little venue change. We're going to have a square dance. Nice, um, nice. So we're going to have all different, like we said, all different genres and um, all different people. So we want to just make sure we're representing all that. Yeah, I think the the square dance <clears throat> especially. So, so um, Sarah Kate Morgan um, from Hahnemann Settlement School is coming. And then um, the band for that is going to be Sunrise Ridge with Natalie Tomlinson, who plays fiddle with us sometimes, um, which is really great bluegrass band. But that should be just a fun, you know, um, you know, family oriented yeah. uh, event. Square dancing is um, so fun. That's yeah. like the funnest thing. And dancing called you can by do. a female, you know, like usually yeah. it's a male caller, right? So I think Sarah's doing the calling it's on be that awesome. one. So. It's awesome. Yep. Uh, I wanted to mention too. I had I had another thought. You know, uh, Beck was talking about. You know, we're able to offer to our friends. You know, spots on this event. I kind of felt like last year. I just stood at the side of the stage and watched every show, and I was like, I just made my best festival, <laughs> like the festival <laughs> yeah. I would want to go to. Right. And I feel like that's what we've done, you know, again this year. And we really try to roll out the red carpet for all of the participants as well. So, like, you know, we had gift bags and, like, yeah. homemade cake and, like, the green room with all this amazing food. Like, we wanted it to be, like, how I would like a festival to be when I go play mm-hmm. and not, like, the platter of yesterday's bologna yeah. i like bologna but you know like i've been to some like, um, right. like literally there are flies around yeah. the like treat your musicians and your artists nice you know they're mm-hmm. your guests yeah. they're coming here they've come all this way well, i mean it's this. being put on by a bunch of women so you know it's going to be extra yeah exactly. you know yeah, yeah. And, and you know the food's going to be good too i mean we had we had we like, all those stereotypes <laughs> i think we had like 12 different kinds of flavored nut butters in individual yes. small mason jars i mean like it was it was it was bougie. legit yeah mm-hmm. nice yeah. that's making me hungry <laughs> You know, yeah, us guys, like I'm, I'm lucky to have been raised by my mom and and my aunts and stuff like that. So, so, so I, I know how to cook a little bit. But guys, you got to learn how to cook, man. I mean, it's shh. yeah. Like the best part of my life was when Tim was transitioning between jobs and he would get on Food Network and learn how to cook all this stuff. I come home to like some kind of glazed pork chop, and I'm like, buddy, just don't go back to work. Like, just do this. <laughs> this this is working out for me. And it's so cool how nowadays, you know, those stereotypes and those roles are changing. I forget which commercial it is, but me and my wife were watching TV the other day, and that was kind of like the concept of the commercial. Like, the woman came home from work, and the guy was in the kitchen, and there's just like a bunch yeah. of, you know, the, the stereotypes, but they were reversed yeah and i wish for the life of me i could remember what that commercial was but it was so cool i mean and, i could not make it in my life without tim so it's not like i'm um, you know think that we have certain places but i mean i took a new role and so he's been able to come and help me at the office he's the one who's up in the morning making the lunches he's the one who if the kids get sick he yeah. goes and gets the kids like I'm not even allowed to do the laundry. Yeah. And I just think, you know, I'm thankful for him and that we have that kind of relationship because I, I could not do it all at all. Yeah, I think that, you know, in no way are we, you know, trying to come out here and say, oh, women are all all powerful, you know, whatever. We, um, and, it, and it doesn't matter, you know, what whatever your relationship is, you know, for us, we're both married women and, and I agree. I could also not do the things that I do, you know, without a supportive husband yeah. who also is an amazing cook. And, you know, so it's, you know, it's it, it's just about being a team mm-hmm. and uplifting and supporting each other. And this event is about uplifting and supporting other women. And and, uh, you know, 
that's that's yeah. it. It's just be, it's just a great thing that y'all are able to do this because I mean, just fifty years ago, mm-hmm. something like this would be unimaginable, unfortunately. Yeah. And I'm just so happy that you know, like when whenever I have kids, they'll be able to grow up during this time. Like, just mm-hmm. what yeah. an amazing time to, especially if I have daughters. You know, I, what an amazing yeah. time for them to grow up and how lucky they are with. with how everything is changing. It, yeah. I know that the world is crazy, folks, but if you look for the good in there, you're going to find it. There's still so much good. And, you know, speaking about good stuff, I love how y'all are doing these kickoff shows as well, yeah. which this will air next <clears throat> Thursday. So coming up this weekend, technically, mm-hmm. back in the Starlight Review yeah. and yeah. Zoe Howard. Yeah. yeah, we're super excited about that. Super excited. Yeah, so Beck's been, you know, kind enough. This this is her, the kickoff. It's a kickoff show for Mountain Girl, but this is the debut of, of her new album. And so, you know, we are all very supportive of that. And um, But we're glad to have these kickoff events where we can um, highlight our artists so that will be playing at Mountain Girl. So like Zoe, and then we um, have events at... Alley on Main and at Great Hall. And I didn't mention Emily Jamerson is is on our bill. And so she'll be playing some of those shows as well. Emily's great. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. Emily. That's awesome. But yeah, it's going to be our, our first big official event. Y'all are like the kickoff show of the kickoff shows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, that's right. So, so Bloom, yeah. I definitely wanted to talk to you about that. Yeah. I love the album name. Thank What's you. the story there? Yeah, so... Um, I know you. we've known each other a long time in the music world, but um, I've been playing music since I was 16. Um, and in some way, always with someone else, mm-hmm. um, which has been great. You know, Kevin and I were co-writers on our whole first album, and that was amazing. Um, and then once he kind of moved on to different things, I was like, okay, Beck, like, this is it. You know, and not to say I didn't have help from other people, but I yeah. felt like... I really had to bloom like I had to Mm. come into my own so like almost all of the writing there was a couple of songs that Kevin and I were working on um, that are on there but almost all the writing is from me Um, I wrote most of the I wrote all the lyrics and um, did you know the four chords on the songs and then the boys made it magic Um, but it was really about coming into myself if I'm you know being honest and can just be that way for a minute it was figuring out like what i could do yeah how much can i do on my own and i don't mean on my own like i didn't need the band but can i sit down with my gibson and write a record um mm, I so what you're saying. yeah it was a lot of growth for me that album is a lot of growth for me how long have you been working on the album for oh, there's one song on there i've been working on since 2019 um wow. <laughs> So, well, yeah, yeah, that doesn't know, seem that long ago, but it's, it's three years. It's three years. That's yeah. crazy to think about. So we we had a, a lot of transition in the band um, since like 2019. Um, went through a couple of different guitar players trying to find our fit. Um, finally landed on Jordan. Um, and he has made me a better musician too. I feel like I've learned a lot from everyone that's been in the band and they've taught me these things, but um, he like makes me do it. You know, yeah. I'm like, I can't do that. He's like, yes, you can. <laughs> um, so it's like, I've got two Tims there, you know? So I think it was um, probably we started writing the songs that are on there, like 2020. Uh, we wrote a lot through the pandemic, um, but we recorded the album in two weekends um, wow. Last, the the yeah. whole album in two weeks. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, and we did it all live, you know, in with uh, Jim City Studios in Jellico, Tennessee, Matt McQueen. He's amazing. Um, and that experience was so good for me, too, because I was there the whole time. Like every part of that record, um, we all discussed and we all made those decisions. And it was just like you're listening to really so much of us on that record um it was a great experience but being able to get the right people and it just fits like jake yeah. and tim and jordan and adam adams from harlan plays harmonica i feel like you already know jake oh, so yeah. um but they just can look at each other and it's just it just goes 
So, I mean, that kind of, when you get that, and I think you can hear it on the record too. Like you can hear their little runs and they're, they're all together. So I'm proud of this record. Really proud of it. Y'all have an amazing band. Thank like you. every time I get a chance to see y'all live, it just, it rocks. Thank my, you. my favorite song uh, to see live, at least, is Letter. I love We're going to play that at the album release. Yes. <laughs> I love that song. It's, to me, that is, oh, it just rocks. Yeah, it's it, fun. it pumps me up every single time. Yeah, that's a really fun song. So, like, is uh, this kind of a special time for y'all to release it? How did you, like, pick this release date? Oh, I wish it was, like, magical, but um, we were just waiting for the right time, waiting for the right time, waiting for the right time, and it never felt like the right time. I was like, it doesn't feel right. This is going on. That's going on. This is going on. And finally, I was like, we're just going to do it. Like, we're just we're just going to do it. And I think it did work out perfectly, though, because it works out perfect with the Mountain Girl experience and the kickoffs and all that. But um, well, we just spring. thought spring... <laughs> Yeah, we just thought like spring. Oh, I didn't think about bloom, that. You know, so um, yeah, very cool. <laughs> yeah, that just hit me too. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, so that that was kind of our huh. thoughts. Yeah, neat. I feel like that was my blonde showing right there. I didn't even think about <laughs> no, spring. No, no, no. And you're you're getting it in the week of spring too because yeah. I think spring's coming up this weekend. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, so it's, cool. it's just a different experience for me. And I guess I'm almost like gushing over it because I'm just so proud of it. I'm so, I can't wait for everybody to hear it, but I'm also like, I hope nobody says anything bad because it's like my new baby, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, of course, I can take the criticism, but I'm just so happy with it. I awesome. just love it. I like the album cover too. Uh, did you design no, that? No, Matt who, Bartley. Who so, do you know Matt Bartley from Sacred oh, yeah, Mountain? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, I love the the tattoo work he did a few years ago about you know the the Nazi stuff and all that. That was yes. such an awesome thing he done. So, shout out to Matt. Matt You're and awesome. Jordan are like best friends, um, and Matt and Tim had worked together years ago, and then just through our. You know, everybody in that band is so heavily tattooed in our band. <laughs> it's just a, Does Jake have tattoos? Jake Jake is the only one. Okay. Um, I'll I would love for you to ask Jake his thoughts on tattoos uh, off air. But it's it's a hilarious <laughs> argument he has about it. But um, So we all know Matt, but Matt and Jordan were talking, and I was like, you know what, Matt, would make me so happy if you would just like listen to this record, just listen to it, and then just tell me what you think. Like, draw me something. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so, so he, he drew that? Yeah, that's his artwork. That's his original artwork. I thought that was just like a picture of a rose. No, Matt drew that. That's He, he listened to the record so and drew that. So, wow. I, I think I need to clarify what I said about him, too. I, probably sounds bad to some folks out there that don't know oh, the, his the, project? the background. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was like, oh, the Nazi stuff? He's not tattooing Nazi stuff. He, <laughs> he's tattoo, he was tattooing over Nazi stuff. Anybody yeah. who had any type of... Like you a know, racist tattoos yeah, or, or, or something Or any like type that. of hate-filled imagery yeah. that was a tattoo on their body. For free, he would tattoo over wow. it or make it, you know, something else. Cooler. He's an awesome human. And yet, like, in the work, like, he would post them too, like the transformations. And yeah. he, he never released anybody's identity or anything like that. No pictures of faces or anything. It was all confidential. And it was amazing artwork that he turned a, a hate filled image into. Like, he turned mm. a hate filled image into something so beautiful. Yeah. And I had him on the podcast. We were talking about it. If anybody wants to check out that episode, he explains it a lot better than I am right now. He's just but the coolest Matt is person. Awesome. That's why he fits in so well with us. It's like <laughs> I tell him all the time, like he's just part of our band. He's he's the coolest person. Well, I mean, like it's it's becoming a community, especially yes. with what y'all are doing with this Mountain Girl experience. Kind of like what y'all were talking about uh, just a few minutes ago. How yeah, you're on all of these festivals, at all these shows, but you never get a chance to work together. Yeah, you are making a a, a Mountain Girl community. Yeah, now. it's awesome. Y'all are going to slap that name on everything, ain't you? We actually we are. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we are. And I'm, I'm getting ready to press, you know, Chris into into making her commit to ideas that we have. So if I say them on air, they have to happen. Um, Put them out in the universe. Yeah. <laughs> if y'all want to say it, then that, that's on y'all. I'm not going to force y'all into anything. But I no, think that whatever y'all put that name on, it is going to bloom. Yeah. Oh, Doesn't perfect. That. That's oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, yeah. So just to wrap that up, Saturday, March 26th, 730 album release and the first Mountain Girl kickoff. 
Um, so we're super excited about that. I want everybody to come. It's a free show. Mm-hmm. So um, I think the city was really awesome to let us do that. And it's at the app downtown. Um, and everybody's welcome. So it's not, you know, there's no age. Mm-hmm. My kids will be there. Um, one of the coolest messages I got was, I'm bringing my daughter because I want her to see that. I'm like, cool. yeah. yeah, you know. Um, so awesome. Yeah, so we, we're excited about that. We want everybody to come. And also like, the awesome T-shirts that y'all have out there. And I'm yes. going to be putting mine on right after this. I had to represent oh, yeah. Zoe a little oh, bit. Zoe will be there. I want to make sure I say that Saturday at the album release. Zoe's opening up for us. So. And that's um, To me, like, yeah, I, I have a lot of favorite female groups, but like y'all are two of my top favorite, and that's going to be Aww. awesome to see Aww. y'all together. I but, love Zoe, yeah. But those awesome t-shirts that y'all have on, are they for sale right now? Yeah, can any, they, can, where can they be fact, purchased? They are. Here they are. Out of my um, back, uh, out of the back of my Jeep. Is <laughs> or <where> my <laughs> office. <laughs> We've upgraded. We, you can buy them at my office. Yes, and yeah. yeah. Mountain Music Exchange show. Uh, Joni Cleary is one of our uh, mountain She's a mountain girls girl. There. She came last year, and she'll do this again. And she had this cool um, selection of um, albums by women, you know, from oh, from, from cool. her record shop. Um, I know my cousin bought a, a cool old uh, Olivia Newton John album there. Yeah, that's she, cool. uh, but uh, she also brought a guitar from Mountain Music Exchange that um, was signed by all the musicians. Mm-hmm. And Zoe won the guitar. We were talking about that earlier. But <laughs> we do have these for sale for $20. Um, we've got stickers. Um, I just don't have them here today. Um, we got a lot of kid sizes this year, too, little kid sizes. And that, I think we're selling those for 12 Um But you can contact any of us. Um And uh, the proceeds, you know, all of our proceeds from this event, again, do go um, to uh, the Domestic Violence uh, Services Turning Point in Prestonsburg or um, for the West Care Emergency Shelter. So, you know, we are trying to be Appalachian women helping Appalachian women. For Mm -hmm. people that uh, maybe can't make it out to this event, is there still any way that they can support that cause? Yeah, you know, our website, which is really beautiful website, um, we haven't put our information up for this year, but there are some great pictures on there from last year's event. If you wanted to see like what the event looked like, and we've got some video and pictures on there, but um, I believe we had a donate button. I need to check on that and make sure. And then we also, um, you know, collect any supplies for uh, folks at the at those shelters. So, you know, they always say anything you use in your home. They can use, mm-hmm. you know, toothpaste yeah. and soap and whatever. Yeah. So we, you know, have a collection bin. We'll have it there that night. But we can also collect, you know, anything that anybody might want to donate. And so. um, it's really important to us, just like you were saying, we're creating a community to let our community be involved, too. Because I think that once you have some ownership in something, it makes you, makes you feel like it's yours. You know, yeah. so we are looking at sponsorship. So small businesses are able to sponsor and we have different tiers of um, those packages so that we can help advertise those local businesses and let them be a part of what we're doing. Because I know that that's important um, to locally owned businesses yeah. to be able to, to be a part of that. Yes. So you can message me or Chris about that um, as well. We'd be more than happy to to talk about that. We'd be very happy to talk about that. (laughs) Really happy. (laughs) Well, it it does seem like y'all have all types of support this year. I know that you did last year, but... <clears throat> this year, it has just really seemed to uh, up the ante. I yes. think that I think the last year it just really opened up people's eyes to how awesome of a, an event that this is. So it's so beautiful. It's a very beautiful thing to see everybody kind of backing y'all up this year. Yeah. I, yes. Absolutely. And you know, as we've uh, you know upped the game, then that requires more funds and you know we were really um honored last year coal town dixie received a a kentucky foundation for women grant for artists enrichment and that helped us pay our artists our musicians and then and then we were able to then donate the funds we were able to donate so we donated like fifteen hundred dollars to the emergency shelter i think that was the so yeah um, but we have a lot you know it's a two-day event now so you know a lot more um musicians and just overhead in general so yeah, we're we're really looking for some sponsorship yeah. from some community um, mm-hmm. uh, to help us out. Well, for the people that want to uh, help with sponsorship, and for the people that want to buy tickets, where do they go to do that? Mm-hmm. So the the we're officially well, I guess by the time this goes out, we should have the ticket link, but that'll be through um, the Appalachian Center for the Arts. So um, we'll have that link available on the website and 
and on all our social media and so forth. But you buy t- tickets through Appalachian Center for the Arts, or as we call it here, the app. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and for sponsorships, they just get, get a hold of you or through the email? Yeah. So through the email or, you know, you can message us on, you know, our Facebook page, uh, Mountain Girl Experience. We have we have an Instagram account Mm -hmm. um, or you can message me and Chris directly. However, anyone who wants to sponsor, you just like hold up a sign. We'll find you. Yeah, (laughs) just just holler. We'll just drive up down the road and look for you. (laughs) And back for the people that want their own copy of Bloom or to stream it or wherever, however they want to listen to it. How do they do that? So um, we'll be selling on Saturday. Uh, We have vinyls, which I'm so excited about. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait to hear it on vinyl. Oh, so I've been listening to it on vinyl. Um, So we got them in the mail and Tim was like, it's here. You know, so we've listened to it probably like 15 times. I know that probably sounds terrible, but uh, just to make sure everything was okay. Exactly, Um, yeah. So, But I mean, to hear yourself on vinyl for me and Tim both was like bucket list, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but we do have the vinyls, and then we do have CDs, and then the album will actually release that Sunday. So, if you want to hear it before everybody else gets to stream it, mm. you come to the album release and you buy your physical copy. Um, we'll have all our other merch there too. But uh, on Sunday the twenty seventh, it'll be on Apple and uh, Apple and iTunes. It'll be on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, all those places. Well, Beck, Chris, thank y'all so much for just being awesome people. Y'all are changing this area for the better. And I can't I can't I just can't wait to see what this causes down the road, the future of women in Appalachia, how much this is going to help. That's what I'm really looking forward to because to me this is only the beginning. This is it's it's blooming, you know, to bring that back up. It's really an amazing thing y'all are doing. And just thank y'all so much. Thank you it, for it having us. You thank do amazing you. things for us here, yes. too, Eli. Thank, thank you for you supporting so us. We, we appreciate Anytime. you. Anytime. But, folks, we'll see you next week. Support Mountain Girl Experience. Boom. There we go. <laughs>